The session is now underway. Earlier this week, Missouri lawmakers made their way back to Jeff City to get work in 2022 started. Politicians gaveled in on Wednesday, faced with a number of challenges in the new year. One benefit, they got some walking around money this time by way of a budget surplus in the billions. For decades, we've been slashing the budget. It's been who is more important than the other. And unfortunately, Missourians have been the ones who are getting the brunt of, of those arguments. This time, uh, we have record numbers. I think our challenge is to, to look for ways to wisely invest that money that would pay dividends in future, for future decades. And so um, we, we need to be thoughtful and careful about how we do it. State lawmakers have a lot of work to do in 2022. They're on the clock to approve several issues, including a new congressional map ahead of elections this year. Governor Mike Parson wants politicians to approve a pay raise for state workers this month. They'll also have to hammer out an appropriations bill to dole out nearly $2 billion in federal education funds from the American Rescue Plan. If they don't by late March, money has to be returned. Now that doesn't count addressing hot button issues like COVID mandates, abortion, Medicaid expansion, and even potentially tweaking budget requirements for the Kansas City, Missouri Police Department. We will see if that happens. Joining me now to talk about the newly started session, Democrat Minority Floor Leader Senator John Rizzo and Republican Senator Mike Searpoy. Senators, thanks so much for joining us. We know the session is off and running. Uh, let's get to it. We just listed a number of issues. What's at the top of your list? Well, we're going to have to get started early and uh, on the congressional redistricting. I mean, filing opens here shortly and we don't have lines. So uh, people need to know what districts are going to be running in, what the districts look like and uh, all that. So, so we're going to have to get started pretty quickly. And then a, a supplemental funding bill, like you spoke about, uh, fully funding Medicaid expansion, education, those types of things, and making sure that the $2.5 billion we have in reserves is spent wisely. Let's talk about redistricting just for a second, because the, the new maps came out about a week and a half ago. Looks like Democrats will essentially be able to keep two districts in Missouri. Uh, peel back the curtain for us. Is this going to pass without contention, or, or what's going on? I don't know if anything passes without contention. That's a good point. I, I think, but I think there's widespread agreement that six to two is a good map. Uh, it won't be unanimous, but I think it's it's pretty uh, widely thought that that's those are good maps to go forward with. You know, ten years ago we had to re, uh, go down a district. That was a much tougher issue. This year, it's I think the path forward is pretty straightforward. Now, more than two dozen bills were pre-filed aimed at preventing mandates related to the pandemic. How do you think that's going to go in this session? I think it's going to get a lot of attention. I'm anxious to hear some of the uh, potential bills of what can be done. I am pro-vaccine but anti-mandate, so I, I think there's something to do there. The, the federal issue with, with large employers is in the courts, so I'm anxious to see how that turns out. So I'm not prepared to say what we're going to do, but I think we're going to look at it very closely and try to do something because uh, I think some of these mandates are a real problem. Now, I talked to Governor Mike Parson last month and he said, you know, I'm not going to stand in the way of private businesses but some of these proposals would. Yeah, I, we've had the legislature, the Republican legislature down in Jefferson City a few different times try to interrupt private business uh, when it suits them. And I think that that's the, the, the route that they're taking. And quite honestly, I don't think anybody wants to force anything on anybody, but at the same time, you have to respect private business. The state has uh, a big surplus in, in the billions right now. Where do you see that money going and where should it go? We've got to find a way to spend, to pay for Medicaid expansion, right, too? Well, I, I don't know that Medicaid expansion is going to cost us much for the first couple of years. Mm -hmm. so the, the federal government's given us $50 million a month as a bump. I think that's covering a lot of those costs. I hope uh, some of this money is one-time money. Uh, eventually, the federal government's going to quit putting buckets of money on us. And I'd like to use one-time money for one-time things. Uh, our computer systems all across the state are so badly obsolete. We need to do some things there. So that's where we're going to do. I think this K-12 money is probably going to pass through fairly quickly. It's, it's pretty much already the Fed's spelled out how it's going to be spent. There'll be some discussion down there, I'm sure, but I, I hopefully we'll get there by March that, when the, the deadline is. But it's going to be, it's a good problem to have, and we need to be careful, but I think there's a path forward. Mm -hmm. We know several bills have already been filed to try and strip abortion providers or affiliates of Medicaid benefits. Uh, do you think Republicans are going to make a push to revisit those policies in this session? I, I would imagine we will. And again, I, 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 support, uh, I support the thought just how we get there. I, we've got to be sure we don't get out of compliance on Medicaid. That's, that's the big thing for me is Medicaid is very important to many people. 23,000 seniors are in nursing homes on Medicaid. We need to make sure 
that uh, we don't put that at risk. And, and Senator, what is the biggest issue that you don't think people are talking about right now? Uh, workforce development and education. There's a lot of money coming into the state from Joe Biden's infrastructure plan, and we need to have the workforce ready uh, to do very complicated jobs in, in rebuilding our infrastructure here in the state of Missouri. Uh, we, we're going to have record amounts of money to rebuild roads and bridges and, and that type of stuff, and we've got to make sure our workforce is ready for it. We, we're in election year. A, a number of state lawmakers might have higher aspirations, I think is a nice way to put it. Uh, do you think that that will slow the, the speed of progress in Jeff City? I think that it's going to be an issue because, uh, as you said, we do have a lot of people running for, for different offices. But I don't know when that's not true at some level. So I, it, it may be a slightly worse than it's been in the past. But uh, even running for higher office, though, you're still, I mean, you're going to have to support good public policy. So, again, I think that'll be an issue, but I don't think it'll be a dominant one. Something that's, that's near and dear to voters, at least in Kansas City, as you've heard of, is the struggle with KCPD and, and the budget battle. We know that State Senator uh, Tony Lukemeyer had proposed uh, changing the limit and, and actually making it more money that Kansas City has to put in its budget for KCPD. Do you think state lawmakers get involved in that this year? I definitely think it gets brought up. I definitely think we have the discussion. Uh, last year we had an issue with residency and Democrats were able to work with Senator Luke DeMeyer and put some provisions in there and Kevin Strickland's home to Dave because of one of the laws that we uh, put in there. So uh, we, we, we have the ability to have the conversation and, and, and turn lemons into lemonade. And, uh, but I, I definitely think it'll be brought up and, I, and it'll be a hot topic. All right, Senators John Rizzo, Senators Mike Sirpoy, we appreciate you having that conversation with us today. Happy New Year. Thank you. Happy New Year.